Hello guys, and welcome to Met Spima. This is the third and final part of the vehicles at the Moskvich Motor Museum. Part 1 featured the classics, part 2 was the sports car video, and this part will feature the concepts, prototypes, and a few extra vehicles. The first car on this video is the Moskvich S1. This one here was the first S1 prototype, made in 1975, finished in a beautiful green which was called Crocodile Genna. The company was in such a rush to get this prototype ready that they used parts off of foreign brands, like the headlights. They were off an Opal. This car did have some modern design features though, such as door handles, which were flush, and exposed B-pillars, and a unique design. There were other C1 prototypes built afterwards, but in a very basic white. This car had the M412, 1.7 inline 4, which put out 85 horsepower. It also had the new 5-speed manual gearbox. The suspension setup was much more advanced than previous cars. The rear end had the independent spring setup, and the car used McPherson struts, which was a new thing back then. Unfortunately, this product wasn't given the green light, and that's why it is a museum piece. What do you think of this car? Up next is this S3. You can see that some of the styling cues are from the S1, but in my opinion, it's a lot more bland. This car looks like a hatchback, but it isn't, as the glass section does not move. This car is rear-wheel drive and has a 2-litre petrol lump with a K150 carb. This car was not put into production due to the Ministry of Transport having decided that the Moskvich needs to follow the front-wheel drive trend. Up next is the Moskvich 356. It was made to be above the then-current 412. It was aimed to be between the Jubilee and the Volga market. Its chassis was from a 412, but it had upgrades to the suspension. It has the use of AM 1.8 with two British carbs, which could bring the power up to 108 brake horsepower. Other models were in the pipeline, but the car was not produced, as I guess they were worried about taking sales away from the 412. Here is the Mosfeach 2136 Arbat. This was their vision of their what they called a station wagon, or an estate, but in my opinion it looked more like an MPV in today's world. This concept was ready in December 1987, and in my opinion looks so much more modern compared to the other Soviet vehicles. On one side of the car it had two doors, on the other side it only had one, which is quite normal these days. This car also featured three rows of seats. This vehicle was supposed to be built on a space frame with plastic panels to help make it easier to start small production, but unfortunately it never happened. This unusual car, but very cool looking car, it was the 2143 Yowza. I think that's how you say it. It was supposed to be a replacement for the 2141. This car is a full working prototype made in 1991. You may notice that this car has a double decker look inside windows which was supposed to help with the aerodynamics, along with the high bonnet and boot lines. I also think only the lower part of the windows lowered. The interior also looked quite modern back then, like a late 1990s Ford. It had a 1.8 8-valve inline 4, with a carburetor, which in my opinion seemed to be dated for such a modern looking car. It also had a 5-speed manual gearbox and an all-wheel drive system the center self-locking diff. Unfortunately, this car also never made it into production. This here is the 2144 Istra, a car built to be very economical. It's very sleek and built to be very light compared to the other cars in the range. It also had a 1.45 three-cylinder engine called the Elko, which had 90 horsepower. It had a special feature called Durothermitech which allowed this engine to run on all kinds of fuel. It could supposedly do 94 miles per gallon, which in my opinion was amazing. The last vehicle on this video is an electric pickup called the 2335E1, which is based on the 2145 car. This vehicle would be so cheap to run 
if it was supposed to be 10 times cheaper than the already cheap petrol prices. The batteries are located in the bonnet and underneath the flatbed. This pickup has a 48 kilowatt motor and 125 amp hour battery capacity. This vehicle could also do 100 kilometers while doing 60 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately though, there was very little interest in electric vehicles back then, mainly due to the expensive price. What did you think of this Moscow series? Please let me know down below. I hear that the Moscow government is bringing back the Moscow name as an electric car company. Anyway, let's see what happens and thanks for watching. Take care.